When I was starting out in the freelance design world, there were so many different services and softwares that were available to me and I didn't know what was good, what was bad, and what I should actually spend my money on, what I should actually pay for. Now, in this video, we're gonna go over some of the tools that I use every single day that I can recommend wholeheartedly that I think that you should be able to use without a single problem, so let's get into it. But before we get into my daily tools and all of that, I wanna show you guys two really great projects that I just found recently, which is pretty amazing. So the first one here is a very fast way to understand how much you should charge for a website. Now this is by an agency and this is what they use to kind of tell clients, okay, this is how much it's going to cost more or less. So this is, you know, keep an eye out, but this is a great way for, for a designer to be able to understand what you should be charging and what you should look out for. So let's get into it. The first thing we should look out for is the layout. So there's three different types of layouts here. There's a simple, middling, and complex. Now this is pretty straightforward. Is it a very easy kind of layout? Is it difficult or not? right? That's pretty simple. Then we get into unique page layouts. So individual designs that you're going to need to build out or design. So we can maybe think about, okay, the homepage, the about us, the contact, those individuals. Okay. Those are three. So let's go into three, for example. And then maybe we need a blog template based layout. So let's go into one. Okay. We'll do very simple, uh, maybe a sprinkled, sprinkled animation. And then we will need blog CMS. Okay. And then integrations, we're not going to do integrations for now. So that kind of tells us, okay, for design, we need to charge around this much money and it should take around this long. Now, again, remember this is for the agency. This is flowmyfigma.com and really cool. They also do the same exact thing for Webflow. So it's a very simple calculator that you guys can use. It is free, completely free. I'm not making any money off of this, so don't worry, but it's, it's a very simple questionnaire that you kind of understand what your hourly is, what you should be charging, how many individual pages you need to do. And then it, it kind of just understands what what you should be charging and what you shouldn't and what makes sense and what doesn't. And what's interesting here is that it also takes into account these two different sections. So how interesting is the project and how important is this client to you? So maybe interesting, it can be, it's cool to build. You're using new tactics that have been used before. You want to try something new. Okay. Well then you can't wait, right? Or it's, or it's business or usual or it's boring. And then how important is the client to you? If it's just money, if it's good for the portfolio or if it's life changing, you know, if it's like Nike as a client or if it's Coca-Cola or one of these massive people, well then you click life changing. Okay. But for now we'll just, just money. And then you also take into account profit, the efficiency fee, rush fee, uh, tax rate even. So maybe I'm going to put the tax rate in Spain. So it's going to be around 35% and then down payment is going to be simple 50%. How many projects are you working on? So maybe I can say like four or five and then how many hours per week? So we can say about 30. Okay. So then with that estimate, we see that a typical project or a fake project in this case to build actually and to develop with Webflow would be 4.5 K and then to design would be around 3.5 as well. So this is a really cool two little projects that maybe you guys can use. Maybe you guys can, can understand a little bit more how to price and how to gauge your projects. And without further ado, let's get into my daily tools that I use every single day. So the first tool that I use every single day of my life is Dribble, and we're going to get into some design inspiration websites, but Dribble is obviously one of the most important ones for all type of designers. And I've, I've talked a lot about Dribble and the benefits and the cons of using Dribble as inspiration and taking just design cues from Dribble. But that being said, Dribble is a great source of inspiration. If you take it as a, as a grain of salt and you understand that not everything is going to be able to be built and not everything has taken UX and research and all that into consideration. Dribble is still a great, great site to use and it's still a great place to find new designers, find new agencies, see what's new and trendy in the design world. And Dribble is just an honestly great, great site to use. So I can't recommend it enough. And again, all links for everything I'm going to talk about is as usual in the description. So don't miss out. Now, next up is going to be awards.com. Now, super cool guys. I was recently picked as an awards jury member. So that's super exciting for me. So this is my official awards jury thing. So I just wanted to point that out and thank you guys, because obviously without the channel and without the audience and the community, this would have been a lot harder to do. So I do want to thank you guys and mention it to you because it's also almost like a win for all of us. It's super cool. So awards without needing to explain too much is essentially daily awards for the best website in the world of that day, right? Or it's nominees and there's different type of website awards that you can look at. So there's different categories. So if you go to the winners and we can sort of filter by different type of awards, we can see that there's side of the day, side of the month, side of the year, developer, mobile excellence, honorable and nominees. Okay. And then within that, we also have individual sections that we can look for. So we have typography, portfolio, music and sound transitions. And so if we're looking at portfolios, for example, if we're only looking at portfolios, it's incredibly important to look at some of these world renowned websites and 
take this as inspiration instead of, you know, your cousin's website or whoever it is, you know, this is the best of the best. Why wouldn't you use this website to just dive in and understand what is a good website? What makes good design? And the way that these websites are picked to be website of the day or how they win is they essentially get put in front of hundreds of people and people essentially vote, which is a popular vote. People understand what is a good website, what's not, standards and all of that. And then they pick if they think it's a good website or not. So awards can't recommend it enough. Close third or second or third is going to be Lapa.ninja. Now, Lap, I've talked about all these websites before, but this is a great, great resource for website design. So the great thing about Lapa Ninja is that in the top left corner here, we have landing pages as a drop down. When I click that drop down, we get this massive little nav here. And we have from SaaS landing pages all the way down to Web3, typography, NFTs, creative, cryptocurrencies, literally anything you can think of is on this website. So this is a massive inspiration catalog for websites. So if we go ahead into maybe furniture and interiors, so I can show an example, we see that there's a ton, a ton, a ton of websites and they're all completely different. They're all very modern and sleek and cool, but they're all very different. Now there's also maybe blogs, for example, as we can check that out. Now think to yourself, how many different ways are there of designing a blog page? How many different ways is there of designing a blog library? Well, this, <laughs> this resource should be almost like a, like a warning that there isn't one way to do it. You know, there's so many different ways to do it and you can always learn something new from this website. There's always something that, that you can, that you can catch and you can be like, Hmm, that's a great way of, of thinking about that. That's a great way of designing it. Also, what's really cool about Lapa Ninja is that you can filter by colors. So say for example, I want to search for a site in Maroon, for example, for some reason, well then these are all sites in Maroon. Okay. Maybe Maroon is not the best choice maybe blue will be an easy one. You see now all the websites that are shown to me is going to be blue or some sort of blue, maybe purple. I don't know, but it's a great way to have this inspiration board be presented to you. Next up is going to be Bonsai. Now I've talked about Bonsai. These guys are my favorite CRM tool and freelance tool. Now, can you have a freelance career and all of that without Bonsai? Of course you can. I can go ahead into my pages, into Word doc and create an invoice right now or a proposal. That's obviously for free even, but without Bonsai, everything is everywhere. It's super hard to connect a proposal with an invoice and a contract and have that be under a client dashboard and then send that to a client and be able to have an NDA and then be able to, to filter in accounting and understand all that within a dashboard for you and for the client. It's super hard to have all of that into one place. And with Bonsai, given the cost that it has, I do think that it is still worth it. Now the cost, I'm not sure. I think it's around 19 a, a month or something like that. So it's not free, for example, but you get a ton, a ton, a ton of value. And I would not recommend Bonsai if I didn't think it was the best option out there. Now there's different ones like QuickBooks and, and fresh books and all that. But for me, Bonsai is the one that I use. I don't use anything else other than Bonsai to do my invoices, proposals, contracts, client CRM. All of this is filtered through, through Bonsai. So you can imagine how much I put into this program. Next up is going to be Notion. Now, without Notion, it's impossible for me to organize myself. I have so many things going on at the same time, whether it's YouTube, freelancing, creating little products for you guys, which are going to be launched pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. It's impossible to stay sane after, after having all these things going on in my, in my life. So for me, Notion is a great way to organize, whether it's the agency, whether it's YouTube, whatever it is, it's a, just a super, super easy way to do it. And maybe one day I'll show you guys my YouTube notion dashboard or my agency dashboard. And we'll see if, if it comes to that, but I have to say probably not, but one day it will be cool to show you guys how powerful notion can be. Now I have created a notion video for designers previously a long time ago. Quality isn't what it is right now. So keep an eye out for that one. I'll link it down below as well. And also I'll have a little link up here or up here, but that is how you can use notion if you are a designer. So keep an eye out for that one. And lastly, here is going to be Calendly. Calendly is almost the standard nowadays for call scheduling. Now it's super, super easy to be able to just send someone a link to schedule a time with you. And I use this almost every single day, whenever there's a, a client that wants to hop on a quick call or someone wants to talk about a YouTube project or something like that. It's super easy just to send them my link and have it be available to them, have my calendar be available to them. And the cool thing about it is that I can mix my personal calendar and my work calendar together so that I can maybe block out times for personal things like 
if I'm going shopping or if I'm taking out the dog or whatever it is, I can kind of block that out and then I won't be able to get meetings in that time. So super basic stuff, but it's extremely important to have those features and Calendly lets me get there. So guys, that is the six or seven best tools that I use almost every single day of my life and I cannot recommend them enough for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, do let me know down below and do let me know if there's anything I'm missing here. Maybe there's a app or software that you use on the daily that I would like to know. Please let me know down below and I'll make sure to give it a try. So thank you guys so much for watching. And again, thank you guys so much for the awards jury member thing. Without you guys, it would have been practically impossible. So I do have to extend the thank you to you guys. If you guys do want to connect with me on a more personal level, then do follow my Twitter because that is where you get to see my updates, my personal life and all of that. So do go ahead and follow me there. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.